Right, hi guys. So I thought I would try the uh, 200 to 600 on the A6700 again, just to see what it's like with planes and birds and things like that a little bit more. And it was quite a windy day, but shooting at 4K 120 as well most of the time in video, it means I could do this, which was quite cool. Um, had a buzzard come over the top of me. He's still quite a long way up above me, um, probably a good 120 metres, roughly, something like that. Um, so I don't know how to work this out, but the 200 to 600 is obviously a 200 to 600 lens. In normal crop sensor, it's 1.5, so that's 300 to 900. Once you're at 900, at 4K 120, it crops in another 1.5 times. So does that make it um, a 1200mm lens, or if you do it on the calculator, um, a 1350 so I'm a bit confused I don't know how it works but um, anyway it zooms in more um, which is quite handy for things like birds flying planes and stuff like that because you've got a bit more reach um, if you want to film uh, planes and stuff like that the only thing that I was struggling with it was really windy I mean it's 20 mile an hour uh, ish winds I'm looking straight up most of the time so taking into consideration I'm leaning back I'm looking up it's handheld so I'm all over the place but also a couple of times I forgot I was in mode 3 which is better for um, the stabilisation on birds that are moving around erratically uh, but not in video so much where I should have been back in number one really uh, where I did swap it over at some point but to follow a buzzer just buzzing or buzzing around literally uh, was quite difficult because he wasn't hanging about he was using the wind uh, to basically cruise about it was amazing watching him uh, do stuff and you know as you can see there get photo bomb by a swallow but which confused it crazily but anyway back on it eventually uh, obviously i've slowed this down four times so it didn't actually take that long uh, and then disappeared behind the uh, tree in the distance there but still it was interesting to watch and then you can see this all, my, all over the place because i'm still in mode three um and as you can see it's a very erratic uh, stabilization but uh, i do soon flick it over to number one which is what i'm doing there uh, and then back and zoom in on it and then see it's quite a bit more stable I'm still aiming up probably about 70 or 80 degrees up to 90 degrees above me straight up so it's quite hard to hold the thing still and also that's, that's cruising at, I don't know how many hundreds of miles an hour and I'm quite close on it so that's why I backed out so it's not easy uh, this one was a bit better because I was having to I was following it basically rather than trying to get ahead of it uh, but still a bit erratic but then again, it's the wind. So you've got a big lens like that, and it, it easily gets moved around by uh, wind pressure that's quite gusty as well. So it wasn't um, just one constant push of air. It was just up and down, up and down all day long, which is really annoying. Uh, the light wasn't brilliant either, so I'm shooting quite high ISOs. Or ISOs. Uh, but uh, as you can see, um, there was a bit of water, va water vapor coming off the wings there. Uh, but one thing I did notice, because I'm shooting at F20 there, um, because I, I don't know what I was doing, but anyway, um, I noticed there was a couple of uh, specks of dirt either on the back of the lens or on the sensor. Uh, it turns out it was on the back of the lens, and I had a look later on. So that little clip there is from Top Gun. It just reminded me, the way I was moving around, it reminded me of the old lock-on um, focusing target of the old Top Gun, the missile launching. So that's why I put that in there. Uh, again, like you can see I'm all over the shop. It was just, I mean, so close on it that... You know it's difficult to uh, to hold the thing still, especially when you're looking up, like really quite pretty much vertical up, because the planes were coming straight over the top of me. This is in our garden. You know, basically uh, the flight path um, yesterday was straight over the top of us. Uh, a lot of the time it isn't. Um, but it does change, obviously, depending on the way people are landing at Gatwick. So uh, another plane in the distance there. But really, really cool. It's it's really nice that you can actually got that much extra range. So in some respects, um, you know, you have really got, you know, I've got the A1 obviously full frame. You've got the RX10, which is a 24 to 600. Obviously on the full frame body like the A1, I've got uh, 200 to 600. But on this, you've got anywhere between 300 and 900, and then whatever it works out as as the crop if you're shooting 4K 120. In the photos though. Um, you can see the couple of uh, dirt spots in in there where I'm shooting at high aperture, but um, yeah, interesting 
for the autofocus up in the sun, that sort of direction. Well, it's behind the clouds, you can see it there, and then it just pokes out quickly. Uh, you, this is where your your restrictions are on your one four thousandth of a second uh, compared to something like the A1, which has got one thirty two thousandth of a second. Not that I say aim your camera at the sun for too long, but uh, you know you are restricted in some respects. So obviously the camera is only a, a fifteen hundred quid camera at the end of the day. Um, so you are limited on some of the specs, but still it performs incredibly well. Um, capturing that swallow there right on the edge of the frame. Uh, grabbing a fly basically um, but I was just experimenting this is what you need to do with the new kit you know you've got to get your familiar familiarities is that word um, around focusing on clouds so for years pretty much every camera out there has struggled to focus on clouds uh, not so much these so much but when they're really white or really bright um, and there's no real definition anywhere that you can pinpoint onto they can struggle uh, but this actually, on a lot of the other, um, the clouds were a lot more white and just more plain looking, um, it was still locking on with the tracking uh, quite easily. And I thought, okay, that's definitely a an improvement. And they've just definitely made it cleverer. And um, it's definitely a uh, improvement generally. Something like this would be a little bit more fussy generally. But yeah, pretty much on it. Uh, obviously, sometimes it won't uh, at all. And you do have to find somewhere that you can focus. Um, but I find in, uh, clouds quite interesting. So obviously that I've classed this as something as flying, which is it's not, you know, hanging around on the floor, is it? It's definitely up in the sky. Uh, pigeon there, right down the bottom of our field, about probably 110 meters away, something like that. Uh, sitting on the fence there, it landed. There was another one just took off, and I just missed it. Um, the plane detection works very well, actually. Even through the clouds like that, it was picking that plane up. Uh, and it actually got it before I even spotted it. So I actually went up to try and find it. Uh, here's a bit of the water vapor off the back of the wings there. And someone always messages me when I'm editing. Um, so, yeah, anyway, a bit of water vapor there. One of the better shots of the swallows. Uh, a bit of a crop in there, but it got a couple of flies in its mouth. Uh, with a white cloud behind, so it was kind of backlit, which was quite nice. Uh, this one there, look, you think, look at it go, yeah, there's some alpha focus stuff, Stu, well done. Uh, yeah, until you look down the bottom right-hand corner, I was thinking, how? I couldn't even see that bird. <laughs> this just shows you how the technology works nowadays. It's it's nuts. Uh, so, yeah, what a, what a fantastic camera, I was going to say. And it works very, very well. Uh, very, very pleased with it so far. For the money, it's an absolute bargain. I mean, I know it's not full frame, but actually I'm, I'm liking the fact that I've got a little bit of a mixture of kit now. So um, it really does give you more opportunities in some respects. Uh, to take out a really small camera that isn't the RX10, for example, and I want to take a camera I can take a couple of different lenses with me, uh, I can, and you know it keeps the bag nice and light. If I'm going to go and do something, and um, you know I want a bit of extra reach in video, I've got it if I need it. Um, obviously, I've got the A1 as well, which is obviously the workhorse. But you know, just to put it out there, the A6700 is is definitely up there as one of the best cameras. I've used um, to date so yeah very very pleased with it and for the price I don't think you can go wrong with it at all it's very very good um, more videos to come soon anyway uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button little notification bell as well any comments below feel free any questions feel free and I'll do my best to ask uh, or answer them rather than ask uh, yeah 